So in this series, what we're going to be doing is learning how to create our own DNS server. So some of you are probably wondering what a DNS server is. If you've ever gone on any website like howco.org, for example, or Wikipedia or any other website, when you type in howco.org, you're connecting to another computer, the computer that hosts howco.org. But in order to connect to that computer, you need to know its IP address. DNS is pretty much just a big, massive, distributed address book. And when you type in howco.org, DNS will go to howco.org and it'll find the IP address of that server and it'll send it back to you. And it does this all behind the scenes and you actually don't even know what's happening. If we right click on a web page and we go to inspect, if we go to the network tab of the developer tools and we refresh the page, we can see all of the requests that are made by the page. If I scroll up to the top here, you can see that howco.org is the first request and everything else is just style sheets and things like that. And if I click on this and I go to timing, it shows the DNS lookup. And this is what happens in order to find the IP address, then we try to make the initial connection, and in howcode.org's case, we try to connect via SSL. DNS servers are distributed, which means anybody can operate their own DNS server. And when you go to howcode.org, you're going to the Howcode DNS servers, and you're actually going to Cloudflare because that's the company that hosts the Howcode DNS records. But when you connect to a website, you're connecting to that website's DNS servers. So we can create our own DNS server to serve whatever we want. So now we know what DNS is used for, let's have a look at a DNS request. DNS is different to other protocols, say for example HTTP. HTTP is the protocol used by the web, this is it over here. That is a text based protocol and DNS is a binary protocol. So you're probably wondering what the difference between the two are. So I'm just going to show you. So if we go to howco.org and we go to the network tab again, we click on the request that was made to actually get the web page, which is the first one. We can see these headers and we can see actual text. This is what an actual HTTP request would look like. This is what an actual HTTP request looks like. It's not some decoded version. But to send a DNS request, you have to actually send the raw binary, the ones and zeros. And to get any sort of output like this with a DNS request, you have to decode it. So we can use a program called a packet sniffer to see what a DNS request looks like. Because what it does is it records every packet that's moving about on our network. So in order to get a packet sniffer, we're going to go to wireshark.org and we're going to download Wireshark. It's really easy to install, so I'm not going to show you. It's just a simple installer. Once you have Wireshark installed, you can open it up. And this is what it looks like. If we want to monitor the traffic that's leaving this computer that I'm using now and it's actually going onto the internet, we want to use the Wi-Fi tab. But since we're building the DNS server on our local computer, we want to use what's called the loopback. And this is just essentially the traffic moving from one part of my computer to the other. If you've ever used XAMPP or a local web server, you'll be familiar with the loopback, which is just your local computer. If you've ever used XAMPP and you've heard of 127.0.0.1, that's your loopback address. So if I just double click on this. So what Wireshark's doing now is it's capturing any packets that my computer sends to itself. So they never actually leave my computer. And the way I'm going to show this is if I go to terminal, I have two terminal windows. The first one here is where I'm going to open up the DNS server that I created the prototype version before the series and I'm going to show you how it works. And this second terminal is going to be used to actually send the DNS request. So this is like the client and this is the server. So I'm going to start the server. I'm going to type in Python 3 and I'm going to run DNS.py. If I run this, I'm going to get an error. You can see it says permission denied. That's because DNS runs on port 53 and we're trying to bind to port 53. And if you try to bind to a port less than or equal to 80, it won't let you. So we have to type in sudo python3 dns.py and put in my password and now the server is running. So now what we need to do is send the DNS request from the client. So we do that using a program called a dig. So we're going to say dig and we're going to type in howcode.org and normally if I just hit enter, this what this will do is send a request off to the actual howcode.org DNS servers and these are the actual live DNS servers. This is their IP address that they've returned for howcode.org. But what we want to do is we want to send this request to a specific DNS server, namely the DNS server I'm running in this window, which is running on my local computer. So the way we do that is we say dig howcode.org, just like before, but then we put the at sign and we say 127.0.0.1. And if we hit enter, this will send the request to the server running on my local computer. If I hit enter, you can see we got a different answer. The actual answer we would have got is this. These are the two IP addresses Cloudflare provide. Uh, websites running on Cloudflare. But the answer my local DNS server has, pr has uh, provided is this one here, which is obviously uh, not correct. It's just a reply to show that it's coming from a different DNS server. What's more, we can also have a look at the Wireshark output. 
if I just stop that, by hitting that, I've just stopped it capturing any more packets. And it set one packet as a request and it got one packet back as a response. But you can see the response is bigger. The length of the response is 77 bytes. The, the uh, length of the request is 61. So if I open this, it says domain name system. This is a decoded version of the data that was sent. And this is the actual data that was sent. Well, this is the actual data that was sent, this blue uh, highlighted bit. The other data that isn't blue now is just stuff that isn't actually relevant to our DNS server. And this is a decoded version of the query and this is the raw data. But as you can see, it's, it's a binary if I just convert it into actual bits. This is the actual binary that was sent by the client, which is the program that I ran here called dig. And here is the actual query that's been decoded by Wireshark. This is what it actually looks like. And now if I go up to the top here and click on the other packet, this is the response we got back, which is the response that our DNS server, the DNS server I'm running here that was written in Python, actually sent back. And this is the raw binary that it sent back. So you can see here, this is the question it sent, but here's the answer. Uh, this is what we got displayed in dig. You can see the IP address 255.255.255.255. So that's just a basic overview of what a DNS request looks like and how DNS works. And in the next video, we're going to be starting implementing our DNS server. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.